Welcome to our concluding video on operations with radical expressions. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, here we are multiplying again. Now it's a little different because what do you notice here? Yes, it is a binomial times a binomial. The word I don't like, one of those bad F words, a foil. And I shouldn't say it's bad. I just like to call it double distributed property. But to each their own. So we do everything in here, multiply by everything in here. It's actually pretty straightforward. So the square root of 5 times the square root of 5. There stays another radical. So 5 times 5 is 25. Square root of 5 times the square root of 2. All right, that's the fives. Now we do it this one. Square root of six times the square root of five. And there's a negative, so negative square root of 30. And negative six times two, so negative 12, all under the radical. So that's how you multiply it out. Now the only question is, any simplification that can happen. All right. First of all, square root of 25 is 5. Can you break a square root of a 10? Square root of 10 is 2 times 5, so no. How about a square root of 30? Well, 30 is 3 times 10. 10 is 2 times 5. You have a 3, a 2, and a 5. So guess what? You can't break up a square root of 30. Uh, 12, however, is 4 times 3. And the 4 is good because it's a root. We can take it out or a square number, I should say. So it can it has a root. See, I got all fast and I got all sloppy. Let me try that again. So the square root of 4 is 2. The 3 stays underneath. Now, actually, this is your answer because there is nothing we can do to simplify it. We can't break up a radical 10. We can't break up a radical 30. We can't break up a radical 3. They're not like terms. We can't combine them. So this monstrosity is the correct answer. So it's pretty straightforward. I mean, you just multiply it out. Simplify if you can. Same with this one, too. Now, you're going to know there's something special about this. There's a square root of 2 plus square root of 10 and a square root of 2 minus a square root of 10. Same process. Square root of 2 times square root of 2. Square root of 4. Now, if you recognize the way it's square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2, you can just write that answer. Square root of 2 times negative square root of 10. They're both under the radical, so they both are multiplied. Square root of 20. All right, that takes care of our square root of 2. Now we do it the other way. The square root of 10 times the square root of 20. Whoa. Uh, square root of 10 times square root of 2 is 20. Square root of 10, square root of 10. Now it's a negative and a positive, so it becomes a negative. So square root of 4 is 2. What do you notice about these two terms? They're zero. They're gone. Goodbye. Square root of 100 is 10. 2 minus 10, negative 8. So that uh, weird number becomes a negative 8 when you're all done. That's math for you. It's, it's crazy and it's awesome. All right, let's just do two more examples of that just to make sure you're okay with it. Now you're going to kind of notice that since these are all different, we might have all different answers. All right, 1 times 5. 1 times the square root of 7. That's a negative square root, so be careful. All right, square root of 6 times 5. Now, because that 5 is not under the radical, that stays outside. 6 stays under. And 6 times 7 is 42. They're both under the radical. Okay. Almost done. Can you break up 42? So 42, we already know it's 6 times 7 because we just did that. 7 can't break up. This is 2 times 3. Hey, 2 times 3 times 7. There's no square numbers in there, so guess what? You cannot break up the square root of 42. That is your answer, just like that. All right. Now for 18. Root of 3 plus 4 root of 7 squared. 
Some of you guys have looked at our shortcuts and whatnot and know a, a different way to do this problem, but it all works out to be the same. Isn't four, isn't root of three plus four root of seven squared the same as this? You just have two of them. So we're gonna multiply them together. Same way we always do with our distributive property. So root of three times root of three is the root of nine root of 3 times 4 roots of 7 is 4 roots of 21. Alright, we got the root of 3, now let's do this one. 4 roots of 7 root of 3, they're under the radical, they get multiplied, so we have 4 roots of 21, which we have the same, because it's squared, and 4 and 7 times 7 is 49. Alright, so a little simplification, that becomes 3, you can combine these, they're the same. That's 8 roots of 21, and you cannot break up 21 because it's 7 times 3. And 4 and root of 49 is 7. Square root of 49 is 7. So really, this is 28. So 4 times 7 is 28. 28 plus 3 is 31. So it's 31 plus 8 roots of 21. All right, so if you've got that, you're good. All right, we have five more problems to do. So let's do them. Now, remember I told you before, you cannot have a radical in the denominator. Why can't you? Because somebody said you couldn't. Wasn't my rule, it's just the one I have to live by. Um, no radicals in the denominator. That's not what we consider simplified. When we get to calculus, we'll discuss whether or not it's really necessary. But I'm going to tell you right now in Algebra 2, SAT test, pre-calc, it is important. And they're important for certain reasons. We want our answers to look the same. That's like saying, oh, I can just leave my answer 18 over 36. Well, 18 over 36 is a great answer. But it's the same as 10 over 20. It's the same as 50 over 100. It's the same as 1 over 2. So if we have the same process we will all come up with the same answer. So if we decide to reduce every fraction, we're always going to get one half. We all agree. Same with this. If we agree to a certain way of simplifying it, then we always end up with the same answer. So 10 roots of 5. Problem. We don't want that in the bottom. That's fair. Let's get rid of it. Remember the magic number, the only number I can multiply by and not change the world? And that answer is 1. So this has to be a fancy form of the number 1, which means the top and the bottom have to be the same. Well, what number are we going to choose? Well, how do I get rid of a root? I just give it another one. Remember, multiply the top and bottom by the same because this is just the number 1. So 10's outside, 5's inside. 5 times 5? Well, that's why we chose 5, because what's the square root of 25? It's 5. So we think, awesome, we've gotten rid of the denominator, we've gotten rid of the radical, but we're not done, because does 10 go into 5? Can this be reduced? What is 10 divided by 5? 2. So this number and this number are the same, written in a different form. This satisfies what we want because there's no radicals in the denominator any longer. So we're good. Now here's one you may have never done. Cube roots in the denominator. What makes it a little different than a square root? Remember, in order for a square to work, you need to have two of them. Radical 5 and radical 5 give you radical 25. Okay. Well, so you might be thinking, if I follow that, if I multiply this by the cube root of 7 over the cube root of 7, that should work danger. If I do this, this is the cube root of 49. 49 doesn't have a whole number cube root. So if I have a cube, I need 
three of them, remember, three of them to escape radical jail. I need a third one. Because what's going to happen to this entire denominator? 7 times 7 times 7. Well, that's 7 cubed. What's the cube root of 7 cubed? 7. If I have 3 of them, that eliminates the radical. Okay? And that's the difference between that and the square. If you're rationalizing the denominator, you need 3 of them to get rid of that radical, that cubic radical. Now we can combine all these to the top. 7 times 7 is 49. 49 times 4 would be what? 196. And does 196 have a cube root? And you can check it out, but it does not. That's how you rationalize a denominator with a square root, with a cube root. But now we're going to do it with this. Oh, come on. What kind of numbers are these? Well, technically these numbers do show up in all kinds of calculations, so we've got to deal with them. How do I get rid of this? Well, if you think back to a problem we did in another video, where is it? See this one here? When we had a plus and a minus, when we multiplied it out, we got a whole number. So revisiting, this is called a conjugate of this. A conjugate. What that means is if I multiply by the square root of 2 plus 1, I will actually eliminate that square root. We gotta follow math rules. Gotta do the both. Okay, because this is a fancy way of writing number one. So now we multiply the top. Because really this is what it means. We've got six times the square root of two. Well, I'm a little crazy with that root sign. Plus one over square root of two minus one. Square root of two plus one. All right, let's multiply this out. 6 times the square root of 2, 6 times 1. Okay, let's do the long process, and then maybe we can shorten it up for the next one. Root of 2 times root of 2, root of 4. Root of 2 times 1, root of 2. Negative 1 times root of 2, negative root of 2. Negative 1 times 1. Negative 1. We did this because what now happens with the middle terms? They're gone. They become 0 when you add them together. So we end up with the square root of 4, which is 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is just 1, so our answer is this. Now that is totally simplified. There's no radicals in the denominator. In fact, there's no denominator whatsoever. And you cannot reduce the square root of 2, and you cannot combine any like terms. There is your answer. All right. So let's take our skills and do this one. We'll try to shorten it up so we don't use as much. All right, what would I have to multiply by to eliminate that denominator? The conjugate. We just do the opposite of that. So instead of 2 minus root of 2, it's 2 plus root of 2. All right, now this is going to be a little bit more multiplication than we did before, but that's okay. So just remember, FOIL, 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times root of 2 is 3 roots of 2. All right, now we do 2 root of 2 times 2. And root of 2 times root of 2. So we got some simplification to do there, and we'll take care of that in a minute. Now let's do the shortcut. No, not a shortcut, but we know what's going to happen to the middle terms. 2 times 2 is 4. What's going to happen to 2 roots of 2 minus 2 roots of 2? 
they're just going to be 0. And what's the root of 2 times the root of 2? Well, the root of 4. So let's simplify this and be done. Screw root of 4 is 2. 6 plus 2 is 8. Oh, these are both root of 2. We can combine them. 3 plus 2 is 5. Root of 4 is 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. No more radical in the denominator. And you've got it now. This extra problem here, it's just a, it's a thought exercise. It's a little weird, but, you know, let's go for it and see what we can do. So don't forget Pythagorean theorem. Remember, a good old Pythagorean theorem. That if you've got two legs of hypotenuse, A and B and C, then A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Alrighty. With that in mind, well, let's do these. It says both legs. This is 6x squared y. So one of these is 6x squared squared y. The other leg is 9x squared y. And together it equals c squared. So that's what we're looking for. The measure of the hypotenuse in simplified algebraic terms. Well, let's just do the process. Let's multiply these. So we get 36 x to the fourth y squared, 81 x to the fourth y squared equals c squared. Add these up, 81 plus 36 gives us what? 117. Okay, the square root. Now here's the thing, can you break up 117? You might think, oh, that doesn't look like you can break that up. Remember, 7, 8, 9. Oh, those add up to 9. You know what that means? 117 can be divided by 9. And when you divide it by 9, it's actually 9 times 13. Well, what do you know about 9? That's right. 9 is a square number. Let's just finish it up. Square root of 9 is 3. Can't do the square root of 13. x to the 4th square root, 4 divided by 2 is 2. y squared square root, 2 divided by 2 is 1. That 13 is left in the denominator. That's our expression for the hypotenuse. 3x squared y times the square root of 13. Well, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Maybe. Maybe not. Weird. I know. Algebra 2 is a lot of manipulation of things. In pre-calc next year, you'll be taking these things and applying them. And then in calculus, we take that to a different level. Not a harder level. Different level. You're going to love it. I'm plugging it in. Plug, take calculus, because you'll have me again. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you sometime.